Here we are again, and this time we're going to be at the steps of the Federated Church. Sometimes the exercises had to be held here, or at the Oval, or at the Grange, because they did not have an auditorium for exercises at the Center School. These are probably the eighth graders, and followed by Mr. Washburn, who was the principal of the school. Next we have the parade heading towards Sullivan's Corner with Walker's house and barn in the background. You see Earl Ang was in the dark colored uh, uniform and we have followed by the um, band uh, with the white uniforms and I don't know where they came from. And here are the commanders of the Legion. We're going to see Herbie Lang with the marches. Um, well, actually, this is um, Earl Lang here in the dark uniform. And he was a war hero. Some more of the army marching. And this is Herbie Lang in the dark outfit here in front and followed by Ross Connors and Austin Green holding a cane. Notice the background. And here are some Boy Scouts marching along and followed by the drummers. They had long parades in those days, and here we are with the Cub Scouts, followed by the Girl Scouts. Maybe some of you have been in this parade. And now going on to another doll and bike carriage parade. The old woman in the shoe coming. And little Bo Peep. She's having a difficult time maneuvering. One little girl is quite puzzled by it all. Here are some more carriages. Whoops. Almost bumped. And following is a carriage, an old-fashioned carriage with real babies. This girl with the real babies in the carriage. They're quite unique. There's the carriage again. Look at all the crepe paper they used. Those days it wasn't retardant, and they had more brilliant colors. Whoa, you gotta look out for the music, girl. Decorations are very clever. And that's Doris Carr. Some of the onlookers. Notice the old car in back, the old station wagon they used to have made of wood. Some more of the bicycles. And here comes the farmer with all the hay. I don't know how he could maneuver this. Whoops, there's a back up here. <laughs> and Doris is following along. Oh, I think somebody lost something there. <laughs> children milling around here, all curious. Oh, here come some more bikes. This is a fireman out front. 
Notice how they decorated the wheels of the bicycles with the crepe paper. Now comes the awards. More bicycles. That looks like a fisherman in front. And the streamers. Red, white, and blue. Here comes a little girl with a basket in front, all decorated. Followed again by Doris Carr. She was married to George Carr. And George was a custodian at the school, and she taught. She was a teacher. Here comes, again, some more bicycles and the onlookers. The awards. Everybody's anticipating. Field day highlights. Well, here we got the booths going up for the, the affair, and you'll see Dot Campbell um, soon, and uh, she was a former dispatcher for Norfolk Fire Police Department. There she is, eating something. And this is her brother, Mickey. He was a policeman. He's uh, greasing up the pole. And boy, they had a real time with that grease pole, as you can see. I don't know who this young fellow is with the blonde hair, but we'll see him again in a sand pile. And there's another one climbing. Oh, couldn't quite make it. Here we have Ted Weber, who was a selectman for three terms, a water commissioner, he was on the Board of Health, the Housing Authority, and he was on the Historical Commission also. Um, he loved to cook, and he did many uh, suppers for the Federated Church. And here's that blonde boy again. I don't know who he is, but he's in with the sand pile again, or the... the uh, well, this is Lang's 1949. There was a barn fire about 3 o'clock in the morning. It was set. And it stood beside the old Norfolk Inn that burned down. And many Legion meetings were held here. Also dances. I remember going to some of them. And they had other activities. It was quite a fire. You'll see... I believe this is a Cronin standing here with his back toward us with a white top and some sort of an insignia upon it. And Fred Land over to the right. Now, Fred Land was the commander of the Legion. He was also the director of civil defense. Here we have him in the middle, and Herb Lang is uh, on the uh, right in the white shirt. They're looking over the debris. And you'll see Fred. I don't know who the man on the left is, but he looks familiar. I almost thought it was uh, Bill McNeil, but it isn't. And there's the Cronin again. And uh, on the right, you'll see Billy Lang in a plaid jacket. There he is standing there. Bill was a postman for a while. He delivered the mail. And it looks as though it's still smoldering. Nineteen fifty. We're about to see the construction of the Freeman School. The Freeman School was the first part of the school that was built. Eventually other there was other um, building on the school and eventually the quads and we called it the Freeman Centennial School. Mr. Freeman, um, there's Olive Day with a fur collared coat as you can see on the left. Mr. Freeman is um, in this middle here somewhere with a uh, see where we where we can find him there with the bald head 
and the light shirt. Now, he retired after 33 years on the school committee. I made and decorated his cake for the retirement party. He forgot all his awards, but he brought home the cake. And there they are, unlocking. Mr. Freeman again. He is speaking to the crowd. Uh, that looks like Mel Long, but I'm not sure. Mel uh, was um, on uh, the school. I think he was probably um, in the Housing Authority in the Building Department and the Flood Study Committee. He died in 1940, 1994. This is the cornerstone being laid on the on the left, and you'll see Eleanor Freeman in the light blue coat and the long hair. She was Alma Freeman's wife. And the boy in the middle, he looks a lot like Chick Weber. This was a big event. So this was the first building of the school. And here we are again at the Grange. This is Palm Sunday. And you see Flo Burke coming out uh, with this uh, long black coat and dark hat. She was married to Walter Burke and she was a Sullivan. This little old lady coming out. I want you to keep an eye on this little old lady with the pocketbook. My husband is there on the right with a cigarette, and he's over there with the palms on the left. The little old lady is fumbling around with her pocketbook. Wonder what she is up to. She's making room for something. I hope you watch. She has her palms, as do the others coming out. And you'll see Carolyn Ravinsky in the light-colored coat, and she'll be bringing her son, Butchie. There she is on the left. Her husband is coming up here in the light coat on the left. He was a prisoner of the Germans in World War II. The woman is still fumbling in her pocketbook. And watch what she's going to do. Keep an eye. She's making room in that pocketbook. There it goes. She probably wore those teeth only on special occasions to church and other other events. And that's Marty Bannon behind her on the left. And he was married to Mary Ravinsky. is looking for someone. <laughs> that was something. And here we see Jerry Shibley. She was a sweet. She was Bill Sweet's sister. Here she is with the long coat and flowered dress on the left. Her family had the Sweetland Farm. And there is I believe one of the Rubinskis. I don't know which one on the left. And here comes Tom with a coat, a long uh, overcoat. He was on. He was an auxiliary policeman in town. And we 
have some twins here with dark coats and big brass buttons. Here comes Ed Hale and his wife, Flory. He's tapping someone on the shoulder with his palms. They're standing, looking around. He's waving. Here comes Ross Connors. He was in the Navy, and he owned the showboat up in Route 1 in Rentham. He was famous for his chowder, which he made for Legion parties on Friday nights. We used to have a wonderful time. And uh, soon you'll see Louis Mariani come out. He was an usher. Um, here he is, and he was an usher at the church. He also was the dump keeper and he ran a store on Mirror Lake. Here we are again at the school. And it's probably the last graduation class. I don't know. It was at the center school. And there's Mr. Washburn. His daughter, Adelaide, was a graduate of Walpole High School in the class of 45. She was the Victorian, Val, Val Victorian. And this is Eddie Wakevich, who ran the uh, Colin Wait. And this tall girl with the braids, I, she looks so familiar. And you'll see her in other films. There's Olive Day shaking the hands of these children. Olive was the principal of the Freeman Centennial School. There's that blonde girl with the braids. And it looks like the Cronins. The Cronin boys. And here's Yucca, Eddie Wakevich again. Now we go on to look at the Grange Hall. That played a very important part in Norfolk history. We're back again, but this time it's at the center school. They're exiting, and there's Betty again, and the Cronin boys, from one of them. All of shaking hands with the students. And you'll see soon the yellow buses that they will be put into. Notice the uh, overhang and notice the doorway. That's quite unique. I believe, from what I was told, they had a stairway that led up to the bell to the tower on top of the school. The senior citizens in years to come had a, had a yellow bus and they named it the Yellow Peril. These are the parade days, and we aren't certain what the celebration was for. But we can see the Murphy House, I think, in the background. Well, it, it was either Murphy House or it could have been um, the man's store, but I'm not sure. It looks more like the Murphy House. And they're marching down Main Street. All in step. Here comes Cochise. And followed by a truck that looks like Ted Weeber's old truck. And we have some horseback riders and some horse drawn. Um, it, it was a wagon with quite a few children in it. horses. I don't know what this really dis 
was a display for. Here's some uh, more trucks. Well, these were huskies. And at one time on Lake, Lake Street, they had a kennel there with huskies. Uh, maybe this is uh, the owner. And an old fire truck. Can you imagine having this come to your house to put out the, your, the fire there? That's quite a truck and an old carriage uh, type of car. It's quite a crowd. This is at the corner of Union and Main Street near the Federated Church. Now we're back again to watch another parade of doll carriages and bicycles. And here comes Frosty the Snowman weaving back and forth. And the Cape Crusader. And whirly gigs. Here's the Cape Crusader. And more onlookers. That's quite a decoration on that bicycle, like a tower. And here comes Frosty again. And this girl has two little dolls, I guess, in her carriage on the bicycle. And the Cape Crusader. It's another pole climbing contest. He's having quite a struggle, isn't he? That pole is greased well. And this, I believe, is Buddy Herder. Buddy used to work for the town of Norfolk. I went to school with him. He went to Walpole, as did a lot of the children from Norfolk. After the 8th grade, they, 9th to 12th, they spent in Walpole at the high school. Do you think Buddy's going to make it? Uh, I guess he gave up. And here comes a muscular guy. He keeps slipping, boy, but he's trying hard. Do you know who he is? Whoa. Well, he's... I guess he has to give up. Well, Buddy's trying again. Here he comes. This time, it's probably less slippery because the other fellows used a lot of the grease up. Do you think he's going to make it? Sure he is. There you go, Buddy. He got the prize. We're going to go on again to the sand pile. They're pushing and they're shoving. And this tan fellow with his back towards us looks like Arthur Bowley again. Remember when he got the prize at the top of the pole in the first segment of our history? There they go. Hard to recognize anybody. That was a fun event every year for I don't know how long. Now we come to the funeral of our tax collector, Charles Demerit. His son went to Walpole High School. He was in the class of 45, as was Adelaide Washburn and uh, uh, Shirley Evans, Mackey, a lot of the Norfolk people, and myself, 
from Walpole included. It was a big funeral. There were quite a few people in attendance. You'll soon see them coming out with a casket that will be led by the Reverend Samuelson. don't happen to recognize anybody walking down the stairway, but perhaps some of you know who they are or can remember. A lot of people to come out of that little church. And here is Reverend Samuelson in front in the casket. And I believe the man on the left is Walter Holmes. Walter, who was a former selectman for many years and our town moderator at, at one time. They were so concerned about the, the uh, boiler that was under the steps of the old center school, but it remained there for many years. This is a brand new school and look what happened. The boiler blew up on the first year. You see all the windows blown out. Brand new school. A lot of debris around from this explosion. I don't think there were any children in attendance then. There, here we are voting for the first time at the school, and out front is Ed Hale shaking the hands of some gentleman I can't recognize, and a woman approaching him on the right. Two elderly women all dressed up on their way to vote. Ed speaking with someone. Who is this gentleman? This looks like Walter Burke. Walter was married to Florence, who was a Sullivan. There's Dorothy Campbell coming out on the left. And here come Wes and Betty Bonney. Wes was an assessor, and he was also on the advisory board for the town. He lived up on Myrtle Street. Everybody's all smiles. Happy to be voting today. And this is Ted Weaver.
I don't know who this lady is, but maybe somebody recognizes her. Notice the field in the background. There's Ted talking with some of his friends. This little old lady passing by. Do you recognize her? Whoops, wrong door. I don't know what they're passing out, but I hope it hasn't anything to do with the election, because that is a no-no. Stanley Chilson loved to take pictures of the events in Norfolk and Franklin and in the area. He especially liked fires. This is St. Jude's, and uh, this would be on Easter Sunday. My husband is at the doorway on the left. That would be Ed Ravinsky. That little chapel, the Ravinsky's made the pews for that chapel, the Ravinsky boys did. Here we see Donna Lang. And he will, there's Eleanor coming out. It will be on his left. Here she is with their children. Donald was once a selectman for the town. They all wore their Easter finery. The women bought a new hat probably every year, a hat for Easter. I can remember one Sunday when I was the only one that wore a hat at Easter time. So somebody jokingly said I should get a prize. There's Mr. Mariani in the background. Now we're at the Federated Church for their Easter Sunday. comes Mr. Weber, Ted. Some of them even wore corsages. Is a little blonde boy on the left by the door. He's probably around here today.
and he stuck out with feathers. Here comes Mr. Freeman, looking around the corner, trying to fix the door, I guess. And he puts on his hat. This woman here on the left looks like Queen Mary, if anybody remembered what she looked like, the mother of Queen Elizabeth. Well, actually, the grandmother of, of, of the present Queen Elizabeth. Some bright red hats. And this woman in the middle with the white topped hat is Doris Carr again. That looks like Miss Day on the left in the red coat. Is that her mother in the middle? This is Arnold Dahlgren going to the right. Miss Day was in front of him. And here they come carrying an Easter lily, so we know that it was Easter time. Well, it's time to light up. That was the thing to do way back then. Everybody seemed to smoke. You couldn't go to a restaurant or anywhere, but it would be filled with smoke. And some more matches for another Memorial Day parade. The background possibly is where St. Jude's built their church upon the land there. And here are some more marches. It didn't look like a very clear day. I don't know who these gentlemen were that scouts are following. And here come the Girl Scouts with Olive Day strutting along here in the middle. She was a scout leader. And here she is up on the left, back left side of this picture and we see this fellow chewing gum or whatever and was smiling and I believe that's Chick Weber. That was uh, Ted Weber's son. He is now a doctor and he owned the land on Highland Lake from which the town purchased. And this is, believe it or not, the end of the old center school. The steps on the left, as you notice, probably went to the tower.
they did all the demolition by hand. I think you'll see the wall come down pretty soon. It's teetering. Well, there it goes. Poor old building that stood there for many years. There's somebody climbing up there. I hope he doesn't go down with the building. Sledgehammers, axes, whatever it took. I guess that fellow came down before the building went down. There she goes. Now this stood beside the Federated Church. Here's another parade, and notice the background there, the old library in the background on the right, and people standing on the hill to watch the parade. I imagine this was another Memorial Day parade. And that's Austin Green way over on the left with his cane. The old fire truck that we saw in a previous segment. Don't know who that is in the middle. Another poll contest. And Buddy Allen is there on the left. He's giving the child a boost. Buddy Allen cooked the chickens for a thousand people that we ha had the centennial uh, cookout chicken feed in the St. Jude's parking lot. And that was the centennial, last of the centennial celebrations. Tough, tough climbing. <laughs> and you can see the Federated Church in the background. So this pole was probably on Town Hill. Well, I don't know. Ah, lucky guy. Here we are again with another parade. And this one is <laughs> so cute. This little girl with her big dolly, and now here comes the bride. And polka dots and here is a doctor with his patient and nurses and this little girl boy is she all dolled up and we have a little fireman and more lovely carriages this one is pulling a cart she didn't have a doll carriage apparently We have to keep them in line. Notice all the onlookers up on the hill, stand, and some of them on the stone wall. It drew a large crowd. Here comes that doctor again.
Well, looks like there's a little trouble here. She's tying the the mask for the doctor. And there's Doris again. She was a central figure in all this. Come Peter Rabbit, followed by a cowboy and a ghost and a cowgirl. And whoa, she almost got rammed that time. Here comes a guy going backwards. And there's a fireman toting a house that supposedly is on fire. And now it's time for the awards. Oh, Peter Rabbit has an award. And so does the fireman. That's special. Some more bicycles. There's an Indian. Another fireman. And I don't know who that was, but there's baskets decorated. And in the background, you can see that was St. Jude's Chapel Church, the old man's store, the tavern. And this would be on Union Street. That's all, folks. The second in the series.